Hello there, in today's video I'll show you the simplest way to shoot cinematic handheld GoPro B-roll including camera settings, lighting, properly exposing and composing your shots, easy camera movements and basic color grading. For this tutorial I'm going to use the GoPro Hero 11, however any GoPro or action camera should produce similar results. It's critical to get the right settings in camera before you start shooting. So here are the settings I recommend using with the GoPro Hero 11. Set the resolution to 5.3K, 16 by 9, the frame rate to 2550p for PAL or 2460p for NTSC. If you want more slow motion, you can also lower the resolution to 4K with 100, 120 frames per second. The goal here is to set the resolution to the highest number possible to get the best image quality with the most detail. The only exception is when shooting in low light, in which case I recommend lowering the resolution to 4K so the camera can downsample the image from 5.3K to reduce noise. In terms of frame rate, the majority of the shots should be shot at standard frame rate such as 24, 25 frames per second. However, if you want to emphasize a specific movement in the shot, you can increase the frame rate to 15, 60p or even 100, 120p for slow motion. But don't overdo it, I know that slow motion shots look much more epic but if your entire video is in slow motion it will quickly become boring. Moving on to field of view, on all of my GoPros I always shoot in linear, with linear the image seems to be the most natural with the least amount of fisheye effect, however if you have more time in post-production to crop your shots and want to improve the image quality even more, it may be a better idea to shoot in the widest field of view possible to get the full resolution of the sensor. Personally I don't think it's necessary, I always leave the field of view at linear and unless I'm shooting action sports, in which case I'll switch to super view or hyper view. Regarding hyper smooth, I recommend using auto boost on the Hero 11. I think it provides the best balance of crop and excellent stabilization performance. If you're using an older GoPro, simply select the best option available. Then for the best image quality and colors, enable 10 bit and set the bit rate to high. 10 bit will help us later on when color grading because it provides more color information and setting the bit rate to high ensures the absolute best image quality. Then for running and gunning situations set the shutter speed to auto and the EV compensation to minus 0.5. In general I recommend manually exposing every single frame which we'll discuss later in the video but when you are filming with the GoPro and don't have time to manually expose every single shot setting the shutter to auto and the EV compensation to minus 0.5 works great. Next manually adjust the white balance to match the scene. If you want the most accurate colors from your GoPro you should always 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 manually adjust your white balance before you start shooting. In terms of ISO, I recommend setting the ISO minimum to 100 and the ISO maximum to 400 in bright daylight and 800 in mixed lighting conditions. In general, you want to keep the ISO as low as possible to reduce noise, however, it's not always practical, so don't be concerned if you have to bump up the ISO a little bit to properly expose your shot. Finally, set the sharpness to low and the color to flat. I recommend adjusting the sharpness in post-production and flat color profile delivers the widest dynamic range which is best for color grading and cinematic results. Another thing I recommend is making costume filming presets as well as costume shortcuts for the settings you use the most. The Hero 11 comes with 5 filming presets but you can create your own and customize them as you see fit. Here are my personal filming presets. The first is for normal 5.3k 25p shooting, the second for 5.3k 50p slow motion shooting, the third for 4k 100p super slow motion shooting, the fourth for low light shooting and the final and fifth for 8x7 aspect ratio shooting when I want to crop for vertical video. You can also add custom screen shortcuts to each filming preset to speed up how you interact with the camera. Here is how to make them. Go to one of your filming presets and scroll all the way down until you see shortcuts. Then as assign the settings you use the most with your GoPro. Here are the settings I use the most. I have EV compensation, then ISO maximum, then white balance and lens. And that's all. Now you should mainly interact with the screen shortcuts and filming presets to quickly change the way you film based on the scene. Lighting is another important aspect of getting cinematic B-roll shots. You should always consider how the scene you're shooting in is lit, from what angle the lighting is coming from, 
and the best time of day to shoot. In general, you want to shoot as close to sunrise or sunset as possible because that's when the light is softest and the colors are most vibrant. However, you can still make your shots look cinematic in say noontime if you know how to properly frame your shot based on the lighting in the scene. There are numerous lighting techniques available, but today I will only cover two side and back lighting techniques. These lighting techniques will generally produce the most cinematic results and once you've mastered them you can experiment with different lighting techniques. Let's start with side lighting. Side lighting is when the light hits the subject from the side at about 45 to 90 degrees rather than in front of it. This will create a nice contrast between the shadows and highlights creating depth in the shot and making it look cinematic. The subject can be a person a car, a tree, a mountain, or anything else. Now, because you'll be shooting with the GoPro mostly outside, the sun will be your primary source of light and you won't be able to move it to your advantage. So you'll need to physically move the camera so that the sun is on the side of your subject. Let me give an example. Let's say this building is my subject or maybe I have someone walking inside this building. So how I'm going to create a side lighting effect? That's pretty easy. I have the sun right here actually now it's on the side of me. So all I'm going to do is go a bit back and rather than pointing the camera with the direction of the sun, which is here, I'm gonna point the camera this way. So the sun is on the side of the shot. All right, I'm going to lock the exposure and three, two, one, go. Now this building is side lit and it looks much more interesting because of the contrast it creates between shadows and highlights. So here is another example for side lighting. This time I'm going to use my motorbike as my subject. The sun is right there, side lighting the motorbike from the left. And all I'm going to do is point the camera straight so that the sun is on the left side of the motorbike. Three, two, one, go. Nice ninja walk. This technique doesn't always work the best, but it's always worth a shot and with time and practice, you'll know when it makes more sense to use it. Let's move on to backlighting. Backlighting is when the main source of light hits the subject from the back. If you're a beginner, this may seem counterintuitive because you're probably used to shooting with the direction of the sun, but trust me when I say that backlighting your subject will make your shots much more cinematic. It all comes down to the high contrast it creates between shadows and highlights, which makes the image more dynamic and visually appealing. And it works best outside near sunset or sunrise because the sun is low in the sky. At noon, when the sun is directly overhead, it's difficult to achieve this effect. That's why I recommend shooting as close to sunrise and sunset as possible. Not only you'll be able to backlight your subject, but you'll also capture the most beautiful colors and softest light during those times. Let me show you some examples. Let's assume this road is my subject. Ideally, I would have a person walking or driving something here, but for now, we're just going to use the road as an example. I have the sun right there, shining directly at me, nice and low and soft. So all I'm going to do is point the camera, the GoPro, directly at the sun to backlight this road. Let's pretend the camera is my subject. And here is another example. This time I'm going to use my motorbike as my subject. The light is coming from there, backlighting this motorbike. Three, two, one, go. A bit of a ninja walk. Now it's time to properly white balance your next shot. I recommend doing it before exposing your shot because it's important to get the most accurate colors first. Here's how to white balance your shot with the GoPro. First, you must determine the color temperature of the sun at the time of shooting. When shooting in daylight, the color temperature is usually 5500 Kelvin. So set your white balance to this volume. However, if the main subject is in the shadows, set the white balance to somewhere between 4000 and 6000 Kelvin because the light in the shadows usually has a different color than when shooting directly under the sun. Again, this is only applicable if your main subject is in the shadows 
a new expose for the shadows, like right now. I'm in the shadows and I expose for myself and I set the white balance to 5000 Kelvin. Now, if you are shooting at sunset or sunrise when the colors are warm, you should technically set the white balance to somewhere between 2500 and 4000 Kelvin. However, if you want to emphasize the warm orange colors at these times, you can increase the white balance to between 5000 and 6500 Kelvin. Finally, for cloudy days, set the white balance to somewhere between 5000 and 6000 Kelvin. However, before locking the white balance, always check the rear display to see if the colors match what you see with your eyes. And you don't have to change the white balance for every single shot, only change it when you move to a new location or the main source of light changes. Now it's time to properly expose your shot. You have two options when exposing your footage. The first is by manually exposing, which produces the best results. And the second is by letting the GoPro to automatically adjust it for you. If you want the most cinematic results, I recommend the first method. It takes longer, but it produces the best results. However, in some cases, such as action sports, using auto exposure makes more sense. Here is how I recommend manually exposing GoPro shots. First, determine whether you want to expose for the highlights or the shadows. For landscape shots, I recommend exposing for the highlights as much as possible because it produces the best results. However, if your main subject is going to be in the shadows, you should expose for the shadows. I recommend using the exposure control feature to lock the exposure. With this feature, you can simply tell the GoPro where to expose by tapping and holding the screen for a few seconds until a white box appears and dragging it to the location you want the GoPro to expose to. This is not full manual exposure, but rather locking the exposure to a specific area in the frame, but I highly recommend using it instead of changing the settings all the time manually. Once exposure control is enabled, you can also tell the GoPro to over or underexpose that specific area by up to two stops using EV compensation. When exposing for highlights, I recommend not overexposing by more than 1.5 stops. This will be based on how bright you want the shadows to be. If you want them dark, leave the EV compensation at zero. And if you want them brighter, increase the EV to plus one or plus 1.5. And when exposing for shadows, I recommend adjusting the EV compensation from zero to plus one. It all depends on how important or unimportant the highlights are in the shot. In general, I would leave it at zero. Now here is a perfect example. I'm going to expose for the highlights for the sky. And as you can see, the shadows are a bit too dark now. So I'm going to enable EV compensation and overexpose this shot by, let's see, 1.5 stops. Now lock the exposure, click OK, and I'm good. Now the exposure is locked, no matter where I put the camera, and I can take my shot. However, if the main subject was in the shadows, like in this area in here, I would expose for the shadows. So let's put the box in the shadows, just like so. And I would play around with the EV compensation as well. I think putting it to like minus 0.5 actually looks great. And now I can take my shot. And here is another example. I'm going to expose for the highlights first. I put the box here on the highlights. And now the shadows are a bit too dark here. So I'm going to enable EV compensation and overexpose by, let's see, by half a stop. And now I can take my shot. And now again, if the subject was in the shadows, I would expose for the shadows by putting the box somewhere around here. And I think underexposing by like half a stop again. And I'm good to go. Now for auto exposure, I recommend using the settings I showed you at the beginning of the video and manually adjusting the EV compensation based on the scene you're shooting in. If you're shooting on a cloudy day, set the EV compensation to zero. However, if it's a very bright day outside, minus 0.5 might work better because the GoPro tends to overexpose the image in these conditions. Finally, if you're using ND filters to add motion blur to your shots, I recommend not going below one over 200 shutter speed, otherwise it will reduce the hyper smooth stabilization performance. If you want to get the best results when using ND filters with action camera, I highly recommend to use a gimbal so that the camera doesn't have to rely only on digital stabilization. 
Before you press the record button, you should also consider how to move the camera to make it look more cinematic. So here are three simple handheld camera movements. Number one is the slide. The slide camera movement is when you move the camera on the same axis from left to right or right to left. Number two is the dolly. The dolly camera movement is when you move the camera forwards and backwards and it works the best when shooting in slow motion. And number three is the pan tilt. The pan movement is very similar to the slide movement, but rather than moving the camera from left to right, you're going to lock it in the same position and move the camera in a circular motion left and right. As for the tilt movement, it's pretty much the same as the pan movement, but rather than moving the camera left and right, you're going to move it up and down and up and down. In addition to all of these camera movements, you can make your shot more interesting by including a foreground object in the shot, such as grass, leaves, or anything else that will make the movement more pronounced. Also, experiment with different frame rates to see if it can improve the shot. Color grading falls into two steps. The first step is color correction, where you adjust the exposure, contrast, saturation, and white balance. And the second step is color grading, where you manipulate colors around and give your footage an artistic look. Let's start with color correction. First thing I'm going to do is adjust the exposure and contrast with color board. Then I'm going to increase the saturation slightly to make the colors pop, mainly in the mid-tones. And finally, I'm going to adjust the white balance with color wheels. I think this image is a bit too red. So I'm going to reduce the tint to minus two. And also the temperature slider to about 4,700. Another thing I'm going to do is add sharpness, but I'm going to dial it back to 1.2. Now let's get into color grading and manipulating colors. First, I'm going to add hue saturation curves and reduce the saturation in the shadows. And then I'm going to focus on the dominating colors in this shot, which are oranges and greens and reds, and manipulate them around. Let's start with the oranges. I'm going to make two points in here. Take the oranges and move them around. And also the greens and the blues deals around here i'm going to push them upwards a bit and also i'm going to increase the saturation in these colors the greens and oranges and reduce the saturation in here let's see if i can also reduce the luminance of the blues and increase the luminance of the oranges slightly this is before and after. Finally, I'm going to add color wheels and finalize the look by creating a teal and orange grade look. I'm gonna take the shadows, push them towards blue, just like so, the mid-tones towards orange, red, and the highlights towards yellow, green. Finally, I'm going to adjust the intensity of this look with the mix slider. And we are done. This was very basic, but sometimes basic is all you need. Now, if you don't have time to mess with color grading, I have LUTs that will do it for you. These LUTs are designed to work with GoPro 10 and 11 footage, shot at sunset or sunrise and on cloudy days. So let's go over the steps you need to take for cinematic GoPro B-roll shots. First, adjust the settings and create custom presets with screen shortcuts to quickly change frame rates, resolutions, and navigate most used settings. Then go to your next shooting location and determine how to best utilize the available lighting. Remember to utilize the back and side lighting techniques. Then adjust the white balance according to the scene and properly expose your shot using exposure control or auto exposure if you are short on time. Then decide how you're going to move the camera to achieve the best results. Remember to focus on foreground to emphasize the camera movement. Finally, after taking your shot, color correct and grade your footage to make it look as good as possible. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and I guess I'll see you again soon. Peace!